Putting a CRT in your home is not a decision to be taken lightly. These things are huge, take up space, and instantly clash with modern interior design. CRTs can blow up friendships and end marriages if you're not careful. Heck, some couples are more in agreement when it comes to having a baby than they are about bringing a CRT into the home. It's like adopting some sort of feral animal that you found on the side of the road. In fact, if you were looking for either a CRT or feral animal, you'd have good luck looking in a lot of the same spots. So the question then becomes is the juice worth the squeeze? Well, best way to get good value out of one of these suckers is to use it and use it a lot. And the more consoles you have hooked up to it, the more likely that is to happen. Plus, if you're trying to rationalize whether or not you should get a CRT in the first place, knowing which consoles you would actually use it on could be a key determining factor on whether or not you want to make the plunge. When people ask which consoles to use on a CRT, I find that a lot of times what they're really asking is what do I play this stuff? on. The consoles that came right before high definition was about to take over. But before we answer those tough questions, let's talk about why CRTs work so well with older consoles in order to provide some context. And for that, what better place to go first than the good old NES. The biggest thing going on is that these older consoles have resolutions that are intended for CRTs. Makes sense given that CRTs were the standard at that time. So when you plug an NES into something like an HDTV, which has a much higher resolution, the smaller resolution of the NES is getting stretched out to fit the resolution of the HDTV, and even if you change the aspect ratio to 4x3. Look, I get where people are coming from when they do this. They think, hey, my NES is a good thing and my HDTV is a good thing, so I'll just combine them together and it's gonna be awesome. Well, adding two things you like together doesn't always work out. In a way, it's kind of unintuitive that an older CRT would would actually provide a more crisp image, but it just comes down to it being a better fit. Now, you might be thinking, hold on a second there, buddy. What about the NES Mini? Are you telling me that image gets stretched out as well? And the answer is no, I'm not telling you that because it doesn't. Let me explain. Games on the NES Mini have their image redrawn into a native high def resolution. The original resolution is 240p, so by tripling the size of each pixel, you get 720p, a very standard high definition resolution. This is a much cleaner way of having the image fit on an HDTV than having it stretched out. If you do enjoy that stretched out look though, you may want to consider just spreading Vaseline across your TV. But even besides the issue of resolution, there's still the matter of scan lines or blank lines if you want to be a stickler. A very popular visual style associated with older games and with 2D sprite based games especially. Blank black lines that are left in between each line of the image itself, this creates a very distinct look that many retro gamers, like myself, heavily endorse. CRTs will just naturally know how to create these blank lines based off the signal that older consoles are feeding into them, but when you feed that same signal into an HDTV, no cigar, my friend. Sure, there's a way to replicate scan lines on non-CRT displays, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with enjoying those, but CRTs create the the scan line effect on their own, and they do have a unique look to them based off the distinct technology of a CRT. So when it comes to 2D games and CRTs, everything's all hunky-dory, but what about when a 3D game comes along? Well, here's where things get interesting, because the consoles commonly associated with early 3D mostly have games running at a resolution that will produce that scan line effect we've been talking about. But for these consoles, we're not trying to give 2D pixel art that extra little bit of definition, so do we really need them? Well, people are more divisive when it comes to that, but the reason I'd still say CRTs are a good fit for these consoles is just due to the resolution. Yeah, CRTs were still the standard at this point in time, so it makes sense that the resolutions of these games would line up with them. Okay, but now we get to the consoles you've all been waiting for. Handhelds. Well, just real quick, I wanted to mention that if you've ever wanted to play your original Game Boy games with scan lines on a CRT, you can do so easily by just using a Super Game Boy on the Super Nintendo. 
it's a natural fit and I'd recommend it personally. Okay, but now to those pesky 6th generation consoles and even the Wii. Let's start with the Dreamcast first since it has easily the most convoluted list of display considerations and you may want to sit on the toilet for this one. Dreamcast can display natively in standard definition or what's called enhanced definition, but not high definition. It can strangely connect with VGA for better quality, a connection commonly associated with computer monitors, but not all games supported this, though it was possible to trick the console into doing so. Who doesn't love tricking their consoles? The Dreamcast also had light gun games that require a CRT to work properly, as well as some 2D games that could display scan lines by activating a lower resolution mode. Oh, and you know RGB SCART, that video connection people really like? Well, the Dreamcast could display that as well, but again, certain games don't work for some reason, and to make it even more fun, this compatibility varied by region. You want the simple solution and my suggestion? Just plug your Dreamcast into a CRT with whatever cable you have and call it a day. That'll cover all your bases. If you want to screw around with all that other stuff, you can, and people certainly do, but odds are you're going to need multiple displays in order to juggle all of it. Moving on to consoles like the GameCube, and things get a bit simpler. Again, you can just plug your console into a CRT and call it a day, after all that's what most people had back then, but if you're interested in enhanced definition like I mentioned for the Dreamcast, that's an option as well. Now, what the heck is enhanced definition? It's not standard definition, and it's not high definition. It's right in between the two. And funny enough, for a brief period of time, there were actually TVs produced that were called enhanced definition TVs. They can be hard to find, and by a stroke of luck, my wife happened to have one that she kept around from back in the day. If the term enhanced definition sounds kind of funky to you, that's because it's more commonly referred to simply as progressive scan or a 480p signal. When you see the back of a GameCube game and see it says progressive scan compatible, that's what they're talking about. I remember when I was younger thinking, I have no idea what this means, but it must be good. Strangely though, some of the GameCube games that support this don't actually say it for some reason. Xbox games have the courtesy to actually specify the exact resolution, 480p or even higher. You will need a set of component cables in order to activate this mode though. These can be found easily enough for the Xbox and PS2, but the GameCube cable goes for the price of Texas due to having parts that are very difficult to replicate. The quick solution? Just play your GameCube games on Wii where component cables are much easier to come by. Screw you, Texas! Or rather, the price of Texas, I should say. Texas itself is awesome. That being said, if you have a CRT TV with component inputs on it, you could plug your consoles into that via component, but most CRTs do not support progressive scan. So after a lot of technical mumbo, you're still looking for an answer. Do I play these consoles on a CRT TV or not? Well, let me put it this way. If you already have a CRT, then sure, but I wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to get a CRT just to play these consoles. For PS2, Xbox, GameCube, and Wii, I would actually recommend an EDTV as a first choice, but those can be hard to find, so that doesn't really make me feel like I'm giving you the answer you want to hear. That being said, they can still be cheap because nobody really pays much attention to them. I tend to recommend having a CRT handy for something like the Dreamcast just because stuff like House of the Dead 2 is a game most people will want and those 2D games look really nice in 240p mode with scan lines. Of course, the Wii doesn't need a CRT for Lycan games because it just uses its motion sensor technology. If you are going to go the HDTV route for some of these consoles, then I would suggest using the best quality cables you can and you can even get HDMI adapters as a pretty popular choice, though the those do vary in quality. Also, maybe you want to just play all these consoles on a CRT because that's what you remember playing them on when they were current. There's nothing wrong with that. If there's a console that you've been playing on a CRT and you've been enjoying it, then you've already answered your own question. Just do me a favor and don't plug an NES directly into an HDTV. Combining two things you like isn't always as good as you might think. But with that said, for this video's question, and this is going to be an obvious one, I'd like to know which consoles you personally have hooked up to a CRT. It'll be interesting to see how that all breaks down. So be sure to leave those comments down below, and I will see ya in the next video. He's the red bird, yeah. And he's talking, talking about video games. He's the